It's Judgment Day in New York State High School Lacrosse. This is the Pontiac High School Lacrosse Game of the Week presented by Warrior. Today, the Class A final, the defending champs out of Section 11, the Lions of West Islip, taking on Section 3's, the standard for high school lacrosse, the Wildcats of West Genesee. Well, good to see everybody. Jimmy Cavallo along with the former Notre Dame captain, Eamon McEnany, and we have reached the famous final scene for the high school lacrosse season, the New York State Championships. We'll start with Class A, West Islip and West Genesee, a rematch of last year's final, West Islip winning their first ever title. And in this rematch, Eamon, this is like taking on the Yankees of high school lacrosse for West Islip, West Jenny. The Yankees, the Canadians, the Celtics, West Jenny does it all. Jimmy, we have had a lot of great games on the game of the week. This could be the best. It has everything. The rematch, it's for a state championship, Division one players all over the field, and with Huntington losing on Thursday, this also could be for the best team in the state of New York. Let's talk about some of the talent in this game, the players. I'm sure Duke was wishing <laughs> that Justin Terry is a senior. He's just a junior. They're getting a flat-out stud in number eight. He is a great athlete, a quarterback on the football team. It doesn't take long to take a look at West Islip and see who's that great athlete who also plays basketball. He's having a great senior year. There we see Nicky Galasso come up with the turnover. He works it over to Terry, and he knows how to finish. He's been doing it his whole career for the Lions. And then we see him wheel and deal, come around and jump up and get the great shot. He has all the tools. He is a great player. He's looking to end it with a bang for the Lions. Nobody has won more titles than West Genesee, 14 overall. They are in the finals for the sixth straight year, but looking for a little redemption. Boy, Rutgers is getting a special player and their high scorer, Colin Donahue. The Donahue's name is a big name for West Genesee lacrosse. His father played, his uncle played, and now he is having a standout season season, and he works well with his cousin Brian. There's the feed to Brian. He knows how to finish. Colin is very balanced. He's had a high score, but he also is a great assist man. He knows how to finish as we see him there. He's having a great end to his senior campaign. It is a battle, Eamon, of two New York superpowers. Class A, the defending champs, West Islip, taking on West Jenny. Two teams will enter. Only one will leave with the right to call themselves New York State champs on MSG. They've always brought you great rooms at great rates. And now, the experts at Hotels.com are the first to bring you flexible booking which lets you change or even cancel your reservation without any fees from us. So you don't have to worry if your plans change. And with the lowest price guaranteed, you never have to worry about paying too much. That's what flexible booking is all about. Just log on or call our certified experts now to find out more. Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. I'm Deb Coffin with an MSG Minute. Trying to become the first Philly in 102 years to win the Belmont Stakes, rags to riches stumbled out of the gate. But jockey John Velasquez got it right, and Tom Durkin has the call. And at the top of the stretch, a Philly is in front of the Belmont, but Colin is right there with her. These two in a battle of the sexes in the Belmont Stakes. It is coming on the inside. Rags to riches on the outside. A desperate finish. Rags to riches and Cullen. They're coming down to the wire. It's going to be very close. And it's going to be a Philly in the Belmont. Rags to riches has been. Curlin second, Tiago third, and after 28 triple crown starts without a win, trainer Todd Fletcher wins his first. John Velasquez had been over 28 in triple crown races. This has been an MSG Minute. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Quick. If you're a high school football fan, then you've got to turn to MSG Tuesday night for the New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. All the room in the world for Ray Rice and he brings it. Heisman candidate Ray Rice, Penn State's Eric McCoo and Virginia's Wally Lundy are just some of this great game's alumni. An incredible 48 players between the two squads this year are headed to Division I programs. The New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Don't miss the stars of the future. Tuesday night at 7 on MSG. Introducing MSG Originals, the inside stories as only MSG can tell them. History you never knew from the heroes who were there on the next MSG Originals. Madison Square Garden to me always was the mecca of boxing. Yeah, I'm 16 years old from Huntington, Long Island, and I'm sitting in Madison Square Garden with my knees be shaking. And all the fights in the world, I had one guy I had to want to take, and that was mine. MSG Originals, the mecca of boxing, premieres this June on MSG. 
How about a look at this crowd on the Pontiac Lax Game of the Week presented by Warrior. It's a Class A rematch, a showdown. And look at the Wildcat faithful from West Genesee. We are just moments away from the New York State Class A Championship between West Islip, the defending New York State Class A champs, and their head coach Scott Craig in his 20th year, and West Genesee. And for Scotty Craig Eamon to get to this championship to defend his title, he had to get through a semifinal. Absolutely right. On Thursday night, West Islip went up against Yorktown from out of Westchester County Section 1. And the Lions came ready to play early. Already up 3-0. Justin Turry with the shot makes it 4-0 West Islip. And it looked like the Lions were going to roll. But the Cornhuskers, one of the greatest traditions in lacrosse, they came back and they fought hard. Brendan Kirk is there with the fastball, makes it 9-7. Then the freshman seals the deal. Nicky Galasso beats his man, cans the shot. The Lions advance with the 12-7 victory. And there's legendary West Genesee coach Mike Masser in his 31st year, a 1962 graduate of West Genesee, legendary figure in Wildcat country, and he's got his team in their sixth straight championship. And to get here, they had to get through a semifinal themselves. Up against the Rockoy, never any doubt really that West Jenny was going to make it this far. It was the Donahue show. Brian with the miss there, but Tim Desco comes up with the rebound and puts it in one of his two goals on the and then more from the Donahue family, as it's Colin Donahue coming up, faking the shot, then finishing it. He had two goals and two assists. West Jenny wins it 11 to three. And Maggie Gray, even though these two programs are worlds apart, section 11 and seven, section three, they are also oh familiar with one another. Thanks, Samuel. After the Wildcats lost to West Islip last year, Coach Mike Messer instituted some new rules around the locker room. He noticed there wasn't any communication going on between his players. So as of this season, all iPods, all cell phones completely banned from the locker room. He even told the parents, hey, tell me if your kids are coming home and going right in the home and putting the iPod in or closing the door. He wanted them talking no matter what, not just on the field, at the dinner table. He also told me, told the guys, hey, serve those first papers before the season starts. That means no girlfriends. He wanted no distractions whatsoever. And of course, West Genesee, they've been known for this, always have a set curfew on weekdays. It's 9 p.m. on the weekends. It's 11 p.m. These guys are about to go off to college, but not without a little Raining in from their coach, Mike Messer. Jimmy. All right, Maggie, and this game today, a rematch of last year's New York State Class A Championship, a game in which West Islip won their first ever Class A. Of course, West Genesee sitting on 14, but, Eamon, you go back to last year, it was a tight one. What a ball game these two schools hooked up for last year. As you the Lions finally getting the monkey off the back, and it was Brian Caulfield backing in, backing in, waiting, splitting, getting the shot. And then Ben Arikian with the dodge, getting the lefty shot off. The Lions held on to a 7-6 victory as the clock ran out. Coach Scotty Craig gets the bat. And finally, the waiting was over for the Lions. They had the trophy in their hands, 7-6. June 10th last year, they were able to celebrate almost a year ago exactly. What a moment that was for Scotty Craig, the West Islip graduate. And there's his keeper for today, the June, the senior Drew DeCicio, heading off to Albany in his first year in the starting position. And Johnny Galloway, the senior goalie for West Genesee, he will go off to Syracuse. So when one net is Syracuse and the other net is Albany, and we are underway for the 07 Class A title. West Jenny and West Islip, that about says it all. Pontiac goalies of the game in this one are good ones. Who plays best will be a huge determining factor. No doubt about it. So West Jenny now, Adam Mazzoni has the ball and the stick back up top. They come to Timmy Desco. West Genesee, New York State's only undefeated team after Huntington was shocked by John Jay in the state semifinals on Thursday afternoon at Hofstra. So West Jenny trying to finish yet another season. Perfect. They will try and move to 23-0 with a victory today. Lions' only loss of the season was an earlier game of the week to Chaminade. Great check there and over the header. So West Ice goals are active early. This one picked up by Justin Terry, the junior. And here come the Lions of West Islip, 19-1. And as you mentioned, they in their only loss on our Pontiac game of the week against the Flyers of Chaminade High School. 
The Flyers win the New York Catholic League championship over St. Anthony's. So here's Turry now. He'll check up top. Ian Bradish. And they'll swing around to Ryan Wayville. Back up top, they will check in with Justin Turry. Turry's had a huge season in his junior year. Here's Turry to Southpaw. Looking to create some separation. Turns back inside. Turry fires a shot. Goes up and over the bar. Turry will be active. He's used to having the pole on him. Still able to get the shot off. Bringing it in, the freshman, Nicky Galasso, the freshman attackman. He's been outstanding. Quick feed in front. And it's corralled by Johnny Galloway. Long live right here. And here come the Wildcats of West Genesee. Luke Committee, the junior midi, brings it across. There's Timmy Desco track that one down. Failure to advance call. The Lions take over in a hurry. Quickly in the offensive end. Shot on the inside by Galloway. Huge is John Galloway. Another quick pass on the inside. He stole one there. That's, that should have been an easy goal, but Galloway right where he needed to be. Stopping Galasso. So Galasso turned aside. Back behind the cage they go. You don't get too many opportunities like that in a ball game, especially West Jenny. Aaron Printup. West Genesee, year in and year out, methodical, patient, unselfish, waiting for the defense to render a good shot. Here's Joey Popo, one on cage, and DeCicio might have got a piece of that. And talking to Mike Messer. So, so, a little more up tempo this year. So many traditions by West Genesee, and there's one the haircuts for the championship game, some various styles as the barber was busy yesterday. Barber, the actual kids, a tradition that goes back to the early 80s. And you can only get that kind of haircut in West Genesee if you make it to the state final. So when you win the state semifinal, you know the night before the final, the kids are going to break out the razors. And Eamon, there are some creative haircuts in this right here, boy. Good thing the prom is over. I said an assortment of styles. We should go back to those throughout the game because there were some that just left you speechless. They were unbelievable. Yeah, one thing is you better secure that prom date before you get one of them haircuts. I was thinking that's all well and good when you're playing in the state championship game. How's that going to look on the beach or at the uh, lake over the uh, rest of the summer? I'm sure they'll take the rest of it off. <laughs> and, of course, phase two of that tradition is if they win the state title, then the head coach, Mike Messer, will have his hair cut following the game. And Messer now retired from teaching, so that could right on the field here after the game and you know mike messer says it's always a good feeling when i got the short haircut in the second week in june it means we closed the deal and won it all such a great tradition it's all about being part of the team here's pompo now joe pompo a lot of size with joe pompo he gives it off to colin donahue donahue trying to drive the cage inside he's pushed out nicely by Ryan Flanagan who's heading off to North Carolina they swing it around now to Aaron Printup here's Aaron to the left hand side he's got room on the inside Printup tries to get a shot off and it doesn't make it there and picking it up is Flanagan West Genesee nobody is more decorated in high school lacrosse than the Wildcats in New York State they have won 14 state championships in the basketball season, we're very familiar with the St. Anthony's basketball program and what Bob Hurley's been able to do in Jersey City. This is pretty much the lacrosse equivalent. I mean, if you play for Mike Messer, there's a good chance you're going to a big time college. You're going to play in college. You're going to play for a state championship. Really nothing but excellence and similar programs and coaches and men. Justin Terry had a look there, got his hands free, took it over the bar. And they lacrosse at every level in the last 25 years one of the greatest ever, only a handful have not gone on to play here's Nicky Galasso going to work now the fearless freshman up on top of the crease he's inside Nicky Galasso has a go wide but he'll draw the foul 
And West Isle will get the first man advantage of the game. Jared Casey going to the box for the hold. Uh, he is not the cliche is. He's not a freshman anymore to these games. He's been around this program his whole life, the fifth of five brothers to play for the Lions. Just a freshman, but determined and strong, holding off Casey, drawing the penalty, putting his team a man up. He has come alive and come along just like the coaches knew he would when we talked to him way back in April. He, so. he played in this game last year as an eighth grader. He was on the field when they needed to kill the clock last year in that 7-6 win. So he won't be intimidated by the situation. No doubt about it. So here goes West Islip in the man up. They swing around behind the cage. Here's Turry now. Gets it out front. Got a cutter on the doorstep. Quick shot on the inside. No good. And it's corralled by the keeper, Johnny Galloway. Talking to Coach Masseri yesterday, one thing he wanted his defensive players to be aware of. West Islip loves to feed the crease. They'll make a pass that most teams won't even think about. So the the Wildcats were ready for that one. So now here's West Jenny, Brian Donahue, the senior attacker. Donahue working against Brian Hogan. Check that. Ball goes to the ground off of Donahue. Cross they come to Ryan Barber. Barber will give to Luke Cometti. <laughs> From behind, here comes Donahue. Colin Donahue pushed and harassed out by Flanagan. Now Desco will give back up top. And then they'll reset on the stick of Timmy Desco. Next stop for Desco is Syracuse. Desco to his right. Spins back, goes back up top. Now spinning off looking for a shot is Luke Cometti. Kometi defended nicely by Turry. He'll give off to Barber. Ryan Barber now swoops the cage. Barber and tight on DeCicio, but Drew is right on it. Both goalies getting tested early and ready for the challenge. As they've made some big saves early. And they're not booing here at Cicero North Syracuse High School. They are drooling. <laughs> Good to see the fans from West Islip making the trek up here to Syracuse. A spectacular crowd here for the New York State Class A final. Into the zone, here comes Flanagan. Flanagan will drop it off to Slick Nick Galasso, the fearless freshman. He will be one of the great players to come out of Long Island. Feels like a heavyweight championship fight as both teams are feeling each other out, Jimmy. Here comes Brian Caulfield now. The Albany Bound senior looking for a shot. He's got that big body. Caulfield, quick shot and a goal. Brian Caulfield gets the Lions on the board, and it is one to nothing. You saw he had the matchup with his shorty, so he went to work right on him. The double team, we've seen it in all year. If you're going to double Brian Caulfield, you have got to bring the body. They didn't get this ball out of his stick. And he got his hands free, and he fired it. When you come, you got to come with the body. The stick check's not going to get it done. Brian Caulfield does get it done, and the Lions have the early lead. We'll be back. It's quickly becoming one of the hottest sports in the country. The ebb and flow, the skill, the speed of the fastest game on two feet. Maybe the best players anywhere are found right here in the Tri-State area. And the one show that covers it all is right here every week with game tips, features on the top teams, the best players, and all the great highlights. Check out the sport the kids are playing on the Aeropostal Lax Report, Tuesday night, only on MSG. There's never been a better time to be an Optimum customer. Now get great gifts for special dads and grads at OptimumStore.com. A new camera or camcorder makes the perfect gift. Choose from the wide selection of all the latest models from Fuji, JVC, Nikon, Canon, and more. Plus, get incredible savings exclusively for Optimum customers. And don't forget to check out the latest selection of HDTVs, PCs, Apple iPods, gaming, and so much more. Go to OptimumStore.com today for this exclusive offer. Optimum Rewards, a special rewards program exclusively for Optimum customers. Yours free when you have all three Optimum services. This summer, you can get the best discounts for your favorite family entertainment and amusement parks, like Hershey Park, celebrating its 100th year. You can even play for a chance to win a $10,000 vacation. 
Don't miss out. Visit OptimumRewards.com slash summer before you make any summer plans. Not a member yet? Sign up today and make it an Optimum Rewards summer. There are ordinary rewards. Then there's Optimum Rewards. Only on MSG. And now brand new Pussycat Doll. Not only are you performing for the judges and the audience that's there, you're performing for the people on TV and, you know, you're out there in the open for people to criticize you. What KCD prepared me for, for the show was picking up choreography class and being precise with your steps and, of course, cleaning the hair in the sexy mood. <laughs> Honestly, I can't say that I was really competitive as far as worrying about what they were doing. I was more worried about myself. My whole life, that's that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be on the stage with the costumes, with the hair, with the makeup, and it's like, it's finally coming into play now. Yeah. I'm totally ready for it. I can't wait. I'm living my dream right now, so I'm, I'm just excited. I'm great. Check me out. Four twenty-six to go in the quarter of Judgment Day. A New York State Class A lacrosse. Suffolk County's West High Sub Lions have a one nothing lead, and this game is brought to you in conjunction with the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, promoting sportsmanship and citizenship through interscholastic athletics since 1923. Let's with Maggie Gray. Well, just about to face off right now is Aaron Printup. He's actually a full-blooded Onondaga Indian. Of course, this the roots of lacrosse very deep up here in the Onondaga Indian tribe, one of the very first to play this game. In fact, just up until two years ago, he was still living on the Onondaga reservation. And transferred to West Genesee so he could play lacrosse here. He told me that lacrosse on the reservation, much different. It's more like box lacrosse. There's that plays when he came to West Jenny, a lot more transition and running. He likes it better playing at West Jenny. Jimmy? Yeah, he is in the right place for high level lacrosse. Here come the Wildcats. Into the zone is Waddick. Waddick with a shot at the CCO. And Drew looks like he's on his game early in this one. He read that one right from the bat, right as it came off the high to high shot. He was ready for it. And when you make your first couple of saves, stop those first couple of shots. It helps so much with your confidence. Four saves early on. Great ground ball by Caulfield there to get it, come up with it. Now the offense can settle things down. As soon as I say that, they lose the ball. That's Mike Finnegan, the Bull Dodger. 6-2 midi. So Scotty Craig has to burn a timeout so that they don't get a failure to advance call. It looks like he takes the timeout, looks thrilled about it. Scotty Craig we talk. has gotten a huge year out of his senior goalie. Absolutely, DeCicio ready to go. He sees it, reads it all the way, high to high. He just moves the stick a little bit and grabs it, corrals it. And he has played well right from the get-go. First year starter, played some, saw some action his junior year, but he's been up for the challenge to take over the varsity reigns. See Scotty Craig, the hat on, bottom of your screen with his assistants, Bill Terry, Peter Murray, Patrick Rawl, under athletic director Wayne Charant. Won their first title ever in school history a year ago. Beating West Genesee and today the rematch, the long anticipated rematch and for these West Genesee seniors. They feel like they have a score to settle in this one after winning four straight titles. They were knocked off a year ago and now in their sixth title. They're taking on Drew DeCicio has done such a great job. He waited his time behind Sal Barcia. Was a great teammate and it's his time now. So here's the Lions. Mike Finnegan. Aggressive, aggressive mini. Finnegan finds a man in the slot. Quick shot. Oh, big save that time by Galloway. Oh, the, he got a foot on it, stopped it, and boy, did that almost trickle in. We're going to have to take another look to see just how close that came across in the goal line. But that was a great save by Galloway on a tough, low shot. And the defender's alert. Should help him out, have his back, because they helped stop that ball from trickling across the goal line. So Wes Jenny trying to break the ride, throws an errant pass. Oh yeah, look at the job coming up to pick that one up, Joe McCormick. That's a great ground ball in the open field. Wow, sure. Joe just flying to the ball. Now here's a pass on the inside, opportunity for West Isop once again. Oh, God, 
Nicky Galasso had it on his stick and just couldn't get a piece of it. Tough pass, good job of collapsing by the West Genesee defense. Made that play tougher than it looked like it would be. So West Islip. And you can tell these programs that know it's the last day of the year. They're riding at will. They're going to make everything difficult on each other, these programs. There's the junior barber now. Drop off to Joe Pompo. Pompo now on a rush. Goes to his left hand. Draws the double nicely. Not good stick work here by West Islip's defenders. <laughs> Hogan gets called for a push. That was easy. Well, Brian Hogan, the senior defender. Here's the play earlier. We talk about the save by Galloway. The nice pass, the good shot. Galloway gets a foot on. Look at that ball. Oh, does it come so close? But Mike Delalo, 26, got a stick on it. I think that was the guy who saved the bacon for West Genesee, keeping this at 1 0. On the attack, here's Barber now. He'll drop off to committee. Now committee to Joe Pompo. Off the motion. Back inside is Mazzoni. Mazzoni has the ball come off the top of the stick. It'll go out of bounds, and that's a turnover for West Genesee. It'll go to West Iceland. On second thought, I think I got to give credit to Chris Aubertine for stopping the ball. 16. I got my one and my twos confused. So the senior defenseman heading off to the Naval Academy comes up big. And kept that ball crossing the goal line. Minute 30 seconds here in the first quarter. New York State Class A final. Doesn't get any better than West Islip and West Genesee. The Lions and the Wildcats. This one promises to be tight throughout. Quickly into the offensive end. Here comes West Islip the Lions. Here's Nicky Galasso. He swings it around to Eddie Plumpet. Up top they come. Hurry, will give off to Ian Bradish. Here's Bradish now. Bradish to his right hand. Bradish shot on goal, and it's a save on the inside. Callaway was there again. Down the other way. A little transition lacrosse now. Jerry Great Cates. hustle there with the check. Caulfield showing he can do it on both ends. Here's an opportunity now. Spinning off is Donahue. Donahue looking for a man in the slides. Got that man, and a goal. Luke Cometti. Gets West Jenny on the board and ties this game at one, the junior mini. The transition game so important, and it usually starts with a big save. Here, West Islip with a shot, but Galloway right there to meet it, and then we go the other way. Jared Casey picking up the ground ball. It goes to the offensive end. The feed, the shot, the score by Cometti. Sees the slide coming, finds the open man. Turry doesn't make the second slide in time. We're all tied up. Quickly, West Islip off the faceoff. And Caulfield will take a look now. He'll set up top to Bradish. Bradish, just a sophomore. He will be a great one. He can really move. And now Justin Turry. Terry, the big left-handed rocket. You know he wants to load up at the left. Turns and fires off the face mask. Look at the keeper. Thought I heard a little pipe. Maybe that was just a lot of face masks, Jimmy, but that, and the Wildcats win the race to the ball, so we're going the other way. Mr. Galloway has come up big ever since that first goal. Terry gets his hands free for the cannon. We'll listen to it. Oh, that's all pipe, baby. That was the pipe. No doubt about it. Quickly the other way. Here's Pomp. Got a man on the doorstep and a goal. Great passing, Adam Mazzoni. Gives him a 2-1 lead. That's too easy. That's miscommunication on the defense. You can't let a pass like that go through your defense to a guy right on the doorstep. They're talking about it on the West Islip defensive end. Great way to take advantage and find the open man. Pompo threads the needle, but he's too open. Adam Mazzoni getting the seam in the defense and finishing. So West Genesee to Wildcats have turned the tide in a hurry. At the end of a quarter, they got a 2-1 lead in this one as they beat the clock on MSG. More snow in the West as Utah gets hit with blizzard conditions. 18.
Do I have to pack it up? I'm going to Utah. I'm gonna use the points. Where does Canada's getting pounded? Yeah. Hey, I heard there's a huge storm in Japan. Shones, who put you on Norway? Norway. Come on, slow guy. I need to be able to travel where I want, when I want. That's why my card is American Express. Introducing MSG Originals, the inside stories as only MSG can tell them. History you never knew from the heroes who were there on the next MSG Originals. Madison Square Garden to me always was the mecca of boxing. I'm 16 years old from Huntington, Long Island, and I'm sitting in Madison Square Garden with my knees were shaking. And all the fights in the world, I had one guy I had one to take, and that was mine. MSG Originals, the mecca of boxing, premieres this June on MSG. I'm Mike Quick. If you're a high school football fan, then you've got to turn to MSG Tuesday night for the New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. All the room in the world for Ray Rice, and he brings it. Heisman candidate Ray Rice, Penn State's Eric Baku, and Virginia's Wally Lundy are just some of this great game's alumni. An incredible 48 players between the two squads this year are headed to Division I programs. The New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Don't miss the stars of the future. Tuesday night at 7 on MSG. Back on the Pontiac High School Lacks Game of the Week presented by Warrior. West Genesee beats the clock to end the first quarter. They have a 2-1 lead in this one. You know our participating sponsor of the lacrosse game of the week is Max Preps. MaxPreps.com is your source for in-depth lacrosse coverage. For schedules, score, stats, photos, and video of Tri-State Lacrosse, you have to visit one place, MaxPreps.com. Giant crowd on hand here today in Cicero North. Syracuse High School, all kinds of college coaches in attendance. Maggie Gray is with one of the better assistants in the country. Jimmy, you're right. I'm here with Duke assistant coach Kevin Cassis. Coach, thanks for joining us. Justin Terry all set to come to your program next year. What was it about Justin that made you say, I want this kid? Uh, well, I think really just uh, he's a tremendous human being. He's a great person. Um, you know, the, the athleticism and, and the goals and the assists, uh, that's just a huge bonus. But he's a terrific person, great athlete, so we're happy to have him. Calling the last 18 months a roller coaster is an understatement, but you guys make it to the final game and you have so much support. What did it mean to you to see the fans and everyone come out and really root you guys on? Uh, it, it was a tremendous experience for the players, and that's really what it's been about from day one, is just, uh, you know, supporting supporting the players and making sure they have a great experience. And, uh, you know, no better way to do that in front of 50,000 people on a Memorial Day. So it was a great, it was a great run. And they might have another good run put together next season, too. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Jimmy, back to you. All right, Maggie, Long Island's own Kevin Cassis out of Comsawak High School. Uh, really, the driving force in the resurrection of Duke Lacrosse was Kevin Cassis and a great former warrior himself. So here we go in the second quarter. Two to one as West Genesee, two unanswered goals after West Islip's Caulfield scores the first one. He's also on the roster for the Rochester Rattlers who picked up their first win in Major League Lacrosse last night against the New Jersey Pride. Tyler Turry. Night. Tyler Turry with a shot right there, and Timmy Desco. Back to town. Here's Brian Caulfield now. Where those goals at the end of quarters really hurt, eh? And West Genesee, they just snuck that one in there. Yeah, that one's going to stick in Coach Craig's mind when he talks to his team at halftime. To give up a goal like that with the clock running down, there's no way you can lose your guy like that. Here's another, Turry. Another pipe. Justin Turry has caught two pipes here in the first half. But he will just keep coming. Now Caulfield, the senior attacker. Caulfield going to his right. Look out here. Caulfield shot on goal and a save by Galloway. Caulfield got his hands free, let one go with some juice, but Galloway had it, got the stick up and stopped it. Galloway, very active goalie, athletic, catch and throw, righty, lefty, captain of this team. That's 
such a lift when your goalie makes a shot save like that. You get the ball back. Now Timmy Desco will join his father at Syracuse next year. Desco now. Quick pass on the inside. Trying to work his way free is Colin Donahue. He'll give off him to come back up to Donahue. Donahue. And around the horn they come to Ryan Barber. Here's Barber now. Looking for a man on the inside. Got one right on the doorstep. And it's a goal. No, it's on the outside. So DeCicio picks up. Here comes West Iceland now. On to the pole, Derek Spezi out. He will head to Brown next year. Off a loose ball, now Turry. They got numbers here, right in front. Galasso put it in the back of the goal. Nicky Galasso makes it a two-all game. Transition, so important, so vital. You're having a hard time beating the goalie six on six. You get an unsettled opportunity, you gotta take advantage. A great job by Turry coming up with the loose ball and moving it, getting it to Galasso in a great spot. There's the ground ball, keeping it alive, working hard. Turry sneaks in with the one hand, he gets it in stride, makes the right pass. Galasso, just a freshman, but he knows how to finish. Transition, unsettled opportunities, the key to a big game, especially when you're going up against a solid goalie. So Vinny Galasso now in the faceoff, but he'll lose out to Aaron Printup. And Printup now gives off. Here's another shot on goal. Tough little shot there by the pole of Sean Mowry. And DeCicio had to go down and make that save. Good read by DeCicio. The shots coming off the long stick are very tough. Here's a long outlet pass to Flanagan. Now they'll settle things down. It's tough to read a shot coming off a long stick here in transition. Radish. Quickly, we check in with Maggie Gray. Thanks, Jimmy. When I was talking to coach Mike Masir before the game, he was worried about what you just saw. Justin Turry able to score, and then Wes Islip getting more good looks on the goal. He said that's the toughest part about preparing for West Islip is finding out these, these great shooters who just keep finding different angles. He said that that's the toughest thing, and they can't prepare for it when they're playing up here at West Jenny. Back to you. All right, Maggie, penalty coming up here, but Galasso's got possession. Whistle will come now. Hey, listen, you're in New York State in the A division. You're going to have some big-time shooters no matter who you're taking on when they get to the final Saturday in the lacrosse season. And Maggie touched on something talking about the difficulty to prepare for this game. You have one game to turn it around, and we see the freshman again draw another penalty on Casey. Actually, it's the slide there from number 19. It's going to get called Aaron Printup on the double team with possession. Galasso keeps it going, tries to skip pass, but it doesn't happen. But now they go to work with the extra man. Man up for West Islip, 32nd variety. Now these teams played their semifinal games on Thursday and come right back up here to play again. You almost have no time to really prepare for the biggest game of the year. On the inside, right on the doorstep, turning towards the goal, no shot here. Here's Crawford, though, making the extra pass, and it's a goal. West Islip, outstanding passing. And finishing that one, was Ryan Waybill, the senior attackman. Great job of being patient by the Lions. Terry made a nice pass inside to the middle. Normally, you just turn and shoot, but you could sense the defense collapsing, collapsing. so they kept the ball moving. Caulfield gets it over to Waddle. Waybill, and he goes low and finishes it. Galasso got the ball right in the middle on the crease, and guys, nine out of ten times, just going to turn and shoot that, but he know, knew he had no shot. He knew they were about to collapse on him, so he kept the ball moving. So face important. Face-off is won by Vinny Galasso, Nicky Galasso's senior brother. Now back the other way comes Bradish. So West Islip now taking a little momentum here with 7.30 to go in the second quarter. Now Caulfield, that was a great shot by Waybill. Cleared his hands, perfect bounce shot. No chance for Galloway on that one. That's the key, you gotta make the defense move, especially with a man up. That's how they get out of their sets, they get out of their game plan, and they lose guys. There's Turry now, going to his right, turns back to his left, Turry, using that body, swims inside. That's gonna be a bench penalty. Not happy with the call. Flag down. You 
got an unsportsmanlike conduct call. So big call here by the official, eh? Because this is going to be a one yeah. minute penalty. You see? I wonder what the calls. I'm wondering if they're calling Terry for a ward here. As he goes to work there. He tries to swim. That's not a ward. So I'm not really sure what the first call was that set off the West Islip player. The, who I believe the call is on Vinny Galasso. Vinny Galasso. But he got a call. And he said something. Exactly. I mean, we could hear that. He thought that Terry was held as he tried to go through. And you could see him facing the official. So that's why Scott Craig had a little conversation with his senior Vinny Galasso. So not what you wanted here if you're West Islip. Man down for a full minute. Wes Jenny. Tough enough to stop him at even strength. Desco now to committee. From behind the cage. Good opportunity here. They're going to load up with Desco. Desco, left-hander, but the CCO sees it home. Good ball movement, gets a great shot, a cannon, but the CCO was there for it. Desco had some juice on that shot. That one was flying in there. The CCO with a monster clear now. He's trying look. to kill some clock, chucking it down on the man up. Man It'll go down. down. His counterpart, Galloway. Now committee. Here comes Donahue now. Donahue up top. Desco will pull it back out. He'll swing it wide to Joey Popo. The future great Dane in on the cage. Popo looking for a cutter. And it's off the stick. Race now for the ground ball. And good hustle that time by Adam Mazzoni to keep it in. And now they swing it around to Brian Donahue. Donahue going to his left. Tough angle shot. Nobody home. And it'll go to West Islip. Good hustle by Anthony Monfredo to win the race to the end line, to the sideline, to get the possession for the Lions. Five twenty to go here in the second quarter. Pontiac High School Lacrosse Game of the Week presented by Warrior. What a showdown we have in Class A. The defending champs, West Islip, trying to retain their title. And they will have to earn it, taking on the team they beat a year ago, 7-6 in West Genesee. And they had to travel to Syracuse this year. Here's Caulfield now. He goes to Nikki Galasso, who will drop it off to Justin Turry. Up top, they will go to Andrew Hodgson, another freshman. Oh, what a stick check here. Ben Waldron. Benny Waldron harassing. But it'll stay with the Lions. Here comes the fearless freshman Galasso once again. Galasso tries to turn it inside. Galasso turns it over to his freshman counterpart. Hodgson, look at this, two freshmen, a little two-man game. Back behind they go to Turret. Here comes the junior now, Justin Turry swoops in front, tough shot. Turry goes wide, but backing it up is Caulfield, and it'll stay with the Lions. He used the hesitation move to get a step. Good recovery, though, by Shane Crossett, forcing the tougher shot. Massive substitutions here as they put in a, another midfield line. They will run three midfields. Yeah, look at Brian Caulfield. What an impact he's had. What a career he's had. Leading the Lions to their first ever state title a year ago. And now going to play for Albany. Here's Caulfield. Matched up with overtime. Caulfield taking it to the cage. This is where he likes to body you. Caulfield turns back inside. Can he get his hands free? Yes, he can. Brian Caulfield getting it done on the interior. And it's 3-2 West Islip. 4-2. Jimmy, Jimmy, you said he was going to Albany, and this is why Scotty Moore's eyes light up when he talks about Brian Caulfield. The drive high to goal line extended. The ball fake out. The defender bites. He rolls back. 
gets the angle. That is textbook attack. He dodges the score. Watch the ball fake to the outside. I'm going to pass outside. No, I'm not. I'm going right to the cage. I am shooting. I am scoring. I am making it 4-2. to two. Brian Caulfield putting on a clinic with this play. Fake. Go back. We're up by two. We'll be back. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Quick. If you're a high school football fan, then you've got to turn to MSG Tuesday night for the New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Oh, the room of the world for Ray Rice, and he brings it. Heisman candidate Ray Rice, Penn State's Eric McCoo, and Virginia's Wally Lundy are just some of this great game's alumni. An incredible 48 players between the two squads this year are headed to Division One programs. The New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Don't miss the stars of the future. Tuesday night at 7 on MSG. This is your home. This is your business. This is your home phone and computer. This is your business phone and computer. You pay $29.95 each for home phone and internet service. You pay $29.95 each for business. When you get the Optimum, double play. Get the most reliable internet access with Optimum Online and experience speeds five times faster than DSL. With Optimum Voice, you'll get unlimited calling in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. Better internet access and better telephone service for one flat rate of $29.95 a month each. With Optimum Double Play for home, you'll start saving your first year. With Optimum Double Play for business, you'll save even more your first year with no contracts or hidden fees. And switching is risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. So remember, this is your home, this is your business, and this is what you'll pay with Optimum, just $29.95 per month each. Call 1-877-778-FAST to get the better choice, the Optimum Double Play. Millions are already saving at home and work. You can too. Call now. Here's this June on MSG. What a crowd here on a sunny day in Syracuse on the Pontiac High School Lax Game of the Week presented by Warrior. And it's Suffolk County so far. West Eyes up the Lions. You know this game is brought to you in conjunction with the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. Promoting high school sportsmanship and citizenship through interscholastic athletics since 1923. Hey, if you're enjoying this game on this day, you know it's coming at you once again on MSG Network. The Pontiac High School Lax Game of the Week. And this game can be seen again June 11th. That's a Monday, 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. West Iceland, West Genesee, the Class A Final, re-air, June 11th, 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Solid, solid ball game so far, but a long way to go. And West Islip gets another possession here. Here's Turry moving it quickly. Got a man on the doorstep. Oh, big save that time by Galloway. John Galloway saved number five from being on the board in a big way. You talk about goalies changing momentum. The West Islip had just scored. They get the ball quickly off the faceoff infraction, and they go to work right away. They look like they're going to make it 5-2, but he stems the tide by making a great save on Eddie Plompin. So the Lions still with possession. Here comes Galasso. Look at Galasso. Strong to the cage. Did he score? Yes, he did. No, the he flag not, comes in. He did not score. He shot it on the side of the net, but he get, draws the penalty. Push with possession but he will Jared Casey again. Casey having all he can handle. The senior going up against the freshman, and it's the freshman now who has drawn three penalties. Gets low on him, goes right to work. Casey overplaying the left hand. Casey, Galasso takes advantage, getting underneath him. Had a tough angle, so the shot, well, there we go to work right away. And right away it is. West Islip with a goal, and Ryan Waybill's got another one. The senior finisher is doing his thing. Mike Messers told us they will make any pass to the crease that other teams won't even think about, and that's what happens there. A great feed and a great finish. Caulfield. The man up attack, not waiting, not wasting any time. And now the Lions have the ball again. Vinny Galasso wins yet another faceoff. And West Isler has it on the stick at Caulfield. Here they come. The Lions are roaring now. Caulfield turns it back inside. Drops it off to the trailer, Bradish. West Isler by the three-minute mark of the second quarter with a three-goal lead as it's Waybill with his second of the day. Now the sophomore Mitty Bradish. Bradish picks up a pick. Bradish to the goal. Got an opportunity. Bradish shoots and scores. 
Ian Bradish, the man who has it all, makes it 6-2. And West Islip has opened up some room. He's the grandson of former West Islip football coach Jack Bradish. He's a very gifted athlete, just a sophomore. Coach says he has the potential to be a great player, and he's realizing it today as he goes through the slide. Desco can't stop him with the check, and he finishes it with a shot. Full speed early, quickly, and he goes right past Galloway with the shot to make it 6-2. West Islip with three goals in the last minute, and look at Vinny Galasso go again. Here comes Vinny off the faceoff, inside with a shot over the bar, but a flag comes in as he draws it once again. So Vinny Galasso, who took a bad penalty early, is responding like a senior should. He's doing everything he can to make an impact in this game, his final game as a Lion. He won that face off and he went to work right away, full speed, barreling in, drawed the slide, and they hit him in the head with the stick check. So that's a penalty on Kevin Waddick. There will be no panic in the West Genesee Wildcats under the tutelage of Mike Masser. And you see Vinny Galasso, in the words of Scotty Craig, a flat-out workhorse. Five unanswered goals now for West Iceland after West Jenny took a 2-1 lead. Check Tyler it. Turry up top now to his cousin. And this one by Justin Sales White. Penalties on Casey. Check that. It looked like uh, Waddick was talking to the refs, but it's Casey in the box. Ball comes back in. Here's Caulfield now. Caulfield with a fake, quick dart on the inside. Turry once again off the crossbar. And Justin Turry has caught his third pipe of the first half. Kevin Cassis, Duke assistant, has to be looking at his future player and saying, more pipes? Jeez, <laughs> we hit about four against Schwartzman and Hopkins, and now my future player's hitting pipes. Amazing. Just a great bounce shot. He beats Galloway, but the pipe is there to save Galloway. You keep it a 6-2 ball game. Really, West Genesee fortunate. They're only down four. You, two of those three pipes go through. It's a different story. Right now, still a manageable deficit for West Genesee, but they got to get it going. The momentum rests with the Lions of West Islip. Under two minutes now in the Class A final New York State. Right here on MSG. Glad to have you aboard for the Pontiac game of the week on our final lacrosse weekend, the New York State Class A Final. They have to have a good possession here. They haven't had the ball in a while, West Genesee. The Lions have scored five unanswered goals. Ryan Barber now taking it to the cage. Barber looking for somebody. Dumps it up top. Now it's on the stick of Plotchko. Jeremy draws the double, creates some room right here. Opportunity. Pass not handled by Barber. Now he picks it up. Flag down on the stick check to the head. Barber got hit on the head, so the Lions will be a man down. So good opportunity here for West Genesee, the Wildcats. With 1.17 to go, they will put some pressure on DeCicio and company here with a man up situation. Coach Scotty Craig always coaching. Justin Turry's last game. Coach, this is still something you can learn. Here's Barber now. West Genesee got the moving. Oh, good stick work right there. And it looked like it was Spezial. Yes, it was. Absolutely, always active. But here's Colin Donahue. Back up top they go. They swing to the open man. From behind the cage, they got him moving now. Pass on the interior and a goal. Brian Donahue, the senior, gets the Wildcats a goal they sorely needed. And it's 6-3, West Islip still in front. It's good ball movement and then pure strength. As Brian Donahue was able to hold on to the ball despite taking a check by Spezial. Desco thinks about the shot. But he gets it moving one more pass, then they feed the middle. There's the check, but somehow he hangs onto the ball, gets a better look, and finishes it. Nine out of ten times, that ball's on the rug. But Donahue holds onto it and keeps moving towards the cage. Off the face, Caulfield wins it, but the ball's picked up by the West Jenny pole. And good ground ball work that time by Jared Casey, the senior. It's important 25 seconds here. West Genesee's got to get it in their end and give them a shot to make it a two-goal game. 
They're being a little too patient here on the clear. Final 20 seconds. West Islip gave up a goal at the end of the first quarter. No way they want that to happen again. Here's Ryan Barber now. As we come up on 10 seconds to go. He'll swing it across for Joe Popo. Popo trying to free up his left hand. He does, and it sails over the bar with six seconds remaining in the half. Good job of Pompo putting on the brakes and working back to his left to get the shot. Here's Colin Donahue now. Final seconds. Donahue trying to get a man in front. Got that man, and he whiffed on it. What an opportunity for Wes Jenny. As the half will come to an end, and the Wildcats will trail by three. I think the tone is set for a rocking second half. These teams are starting to dislike each other. They're starting to play with some urgency. And Donahue was able to finish the one before. This time, the check does just enough as he comes out of his stick. And then there's a little extra business there from Flanagan. Maybe a little late, maybe away from the ball. See, there's the shot. That's definitely late. Flanagan got away with one there. No doubt about it. 24 minutes in the books, the New York State Class A final. West Islip, Scotty Craig's club with a three-goal lead, and he's with Maggie Gray. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm here with Scott Craig. A lot of faces have been in this kind of high-pressure game before, but it was really important that your team distinguish itself from last year's team. How is this team different than last year's team? You know, I don't, I don't know if we're a lot different as far as how we play. You know, we're, we're, we have a different personality, and guys that had different roles last year have taken on new roles this year. Our leaders are different. The guys that are, are the weights falling on their shoulder are different. And, uh, you know, I think that's the biggest change from year to year. You need to find a point in the season where your new group of leaders realize it's their turn to take charge. And they've been doing, everyone doing it here tonight. You are head by three goals in this whole season. You've had big third quarters. How do you put together one last big third quarter? Well, you know, we didn't have a big one the other night, and that's what we were, you know, we got to be concerned with, you know, I thought we had a lot of good opportunities in the first six, seven minutes of the game they don't convert on. And then we started to get some things to drop for us. We need to continue to do that. You know, we're, we're going to get our shots, as I told you before, but we need to finish better than we did in the beginning of the game. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. Jimmy, back up to you. All right, Maggie, it's a game abundant with storylines. The defending champs, West Islip, West Genesee, only undefeated team in the state. Something has to give in the second half. Come on back. Viewer discretion advised. The following message may trouble drivers insured with Allstate, State Farm, Geico, and other major insurance companies. We have reason to believe you are overpaying. Yes, overpaying by $349.88 a year on average. Stop overpaying. Call now for a rate quote from AIG Auto Insurance. 